Hello, and welcome to Bringing Education Home. I'm Herb. And I'm Christina. And together we share ideas and experts that help families become healthy, happy, and successful that are both inside and outside the box. If you like the show, be sure to follow Christina on Facebook. And please leave us a like and review on your favorite podcast platform. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Norma Sue McCormick. Norma is a mom raising her three children while building her cleaning business. Her quest for answers around food and natural healing began early on while raising her children. Norma became a certified health coach and studied at the Institute of Integrated Nutrition in 2015. The importance of fresh living food on our bodies, minds, soul, and spirit made a huge impact on her. Feeling a disconnect in the food industry with the processing and growing of our foods led Norma on a path to educate and help people understand the issues related to foods we eat and our health issues and diseases. Norma has written two children's books, Food Fun with Trudy, which is an activity guide to start young children on a fun path to fresh food, to fresh food games, <laughs> educational tips, and smoothie recipes, and Gertie's Living Garden, which teaches children simple life lessons such as sharing our abundance, connectedness with others, and the importance of eating together and consuming fresh, healthy, living foods as much as possible. She is currently working on another children's recipe book to get families in the kitchen cooking together, and experiencing new flavors and textures while enjoying satisfying meals. This is a beautiful bio. It goes so much with what we're trying to do here at Vibrant Family Education to bring the family together in a healthy way. And food and cooking is, is absolutely part of it. It's not just about school. So thank you for joining us. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Thank you so much. I am honored to be here and to share with you and your audience some of the things and tips and tricks we can do to maybe make things a little easier in life. Awesome. Well, I know that in your bio, you said that you were you know, starting to dive into some of this through your um, working with your kids and raising your kids and things like that. But was there an event or something that really kind of tipped the scales and made you passionate about making sure that this message got out there? Yes, there actually was. Um, I watched three of my children while they were growing up. They're, my baby will turn huh, 34 next next Monday. Uh -huh. And I watched as they ate the same things, but obviously their bodies process things differently. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until years later, I realized that there was a very traumatic event that happened when he was young. And because of that event, it led to a whole bunch of choices he made in his life. The food didn't shed the way it did maybe on his sister's. There was things that he felt like he had to do to be tough um, and not have anyone attack him again. And this happened like at four or five years old. And I never put the pieces together until I really started looking into trauma and how trauma affects us. And it was just heartbreaking to me. It's something I haven't really been able to discuss with him because he put on this big macho, this big safe exterior, like nobody's going to do this to me again. And unfortunately, when we look at diet and, and weight loss, and I hate saying weight loss, but what it is, it's a mechanism a lot of times to put on to save us and keep us comfortable. And it wasn't until I was reading the book, Conscious Eating, and the doctor started talking about women that had been through traumatic events and put on weight because that was their protector. And that's when the light bulb went off. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been viewing this all my life. I started looking into health. Like, why is it he can't lose the weight or he seems to be putting it on? Mm -hmm. I'm putting him in sports activities. We're doing things, yeah. but yet it's not coming off. And when you have something like that going on, especially in the formative years, even up into your teens, that's your protection mechanism. And that's not going to change. So until he gets to that point where he can release and know that he's okay and safe, you know, it'll, it'll shift. So sorry, long, long answer to the question. No, it's beautiful. I suffered a traumatic brain injury. And after that, it, it took me, it's a lot harder for me to lose weight once, once that happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a psycho-spiritual integration coach. So all of the stuff you're saying about how early childhood traumas affect the way you eat, affect the way your body processes, that, that rings so true for me. And so the the fact that you like came to it through observing your children is is just fabulous. So well done. Yeah. Well, you know, and I want to remind the audience, you know, we're all doing the best we can. And, you know, when I was raising my kids, it was important for me, obviously, to work and to put money on the table with my husband, you know, and help get through life. You know, we were doing the American dream. Right. And I look back now and I think, God, if I could have done things different, 
what would that have been? Obviously, it would have been a lot more fresh food, you know, because we were on the go, like maybe a lot of your parents were, you know, they're coming from school, they're going to these activities, yep. you know, and then for myself, a lot of times I was working a night job. So I was going back out to work shortly after getting them home and getting them settled, you know, yeah. and it just got to be this rat race. And the foods we were eating were not the best that they could have been. Mm -hmm. And I look back now and my husband had grown up in restaurants and was a great chef. I mean, like I couldn't cook. And when you we got laughing. married, I laughed because I said, oh, I'm great with boxes and cans kind of as a joke. But right. I look back and I go, wow, that was kind of the truth of it. <laughs> I mean, he could go to the cabinet and fix something. And I'd look and go, my God, where did you find that? He goes, everything was in the kitchen. I'm like, really? You know, so <laughs> it's how we're grown up and what we learn. <laughs> this guy can do the same thing and it drives me nuts. If you give me a recipe, I am good. If you ask me to go empty the fridge or something, nope, that's his job. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was kind of comical and just, you know, I, I look back and I thought, wow. And as I started watching the younger kids and obviously becoming a health coach and realizing in a lot of the bigger cities, inner cities, kids don't have an idea where food comes from. They know that there was a box or that something was in the cabinet and they were able to pull it out and they were able to consume what I call a food-like substance. Right. And, and that's kind of the extent of it. So my passion really went, I've always been drawn to nature. And I thought, wow, what if we had community gardens where people could either come and share fully of their plot or helping as a community come together? Because again, community is so big with raising kids and families and having the support system. And I, I know that's what you guys do with the Vibrant Education. You're bringing communities together. So they have a support system. And I believe without that support, support system, we kind of fall short. Mm -hmm. And for Jim and I, we moved here to Arizona and I didn't have family here. I had no one. So we had to rely on one another and the friends we started to meet and the adopted grandparents that we got that filled in in the meantime. So community was very big. You know, I also knew that the foods they were going to consume was going to be important. And even more today, as you know, Herb, I've heard you have a wonderful garden <laughs> and I'm envious. The more we can grow some of that food, the better off we're going to be because we can start to, and I don't like using the word control, but we, we can know where our food came from. Yeah. We can know what was put in the soil. Mm -hmm. We have an idea of how we're feeding our bodies. And, you know, it's that, that even if we did 20% more, what would just 20% more look like in our life? You know, I think it could make a big difference eating the fresh living healthy foods. Yeah. So, so the out of the box is, is me. So she's in the box. She, so I, I put things together. I hear stuff that you say. So if you have a 30 year old child, then, then you're probably a Gen Xer. And our parents were the first parents that both of them started working out of the home. And so that's what we grew up with. Mm -hmm. Before that, there was usually a parent that stayed at home and taught yes. cooking and taught the life skills. So we were the forgotten generation is what they call the Gen Xers. We were feral. We were we we left the house outside, played outside all day. We're responsible <laughs> yeah. for eating, cooking ourselves. But our parents were both busy. So they brought stuff that we were we were the start of the microwave dinners i mean they they came about while we were there <laughs> chef boyardee in a can you know all of <laughs> all of these foods were our staples because our parents were the first generation where both Not of them working. had to go to work and like you said it's like well you know we both had to go to work you know that that's that's a myth now it, well kind of with our with the way our our economy is going right now it's not so much a myth but it used to be a myth that we needed both of the parents out there working so we did become disconnected from the cooking we did come disconnected from the the family getting together and eating and that was a tremendous disservice to our family to our health and to the way we eat because we became disconnected from our food and Absolutely. And and that's where, you know, Gertie's Living Garden came in because it was the pillars of, you know, eating fresh, healthy food, getting out like you're talking about and, and getting that fresh air, the sunshine movement daily. You know, it was harvesting of things that you grew and then sharing bountifully with those around. And I think those are pillars that we've really lost what it was about to be a community and to come together and support one another. 
And I would always look at my kids and go, it wasn't like this when I was a kid. It wasn't like this when I was a kid. And, and granted, we didn't always have, you know, we had processed foods, but the processing today, the ultra processed is so much worse. And, and it breaks my heart when I listen to these moms and go, you know, my child just had this rant and rage in the store. And you go back and you look, but wait a minute, he just ate Dorito corn chips or he had something with red dye 40. And we're wondering why is this happening? Well, I can tell you why it's happening because we're not stopping to look at what we're feeding them. And I think if we can, and, and that was one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit was yeah. slow down at my age. Now, I just feel like, you know, I want that simpler lifestyle. I want to slow down because in comparison to where I grew up and where we're at now, I go, wow, this is like a little merry-go-round. And I have heart and compassion for these parents with all they're trying to do and get done. You've got the electronics that kids are just plugged into. Uh, we're not, well, I'll go back to the communication because that was one thing I wish I had learned better. Um, we're, we're just missing it. We're missing it. We're not on the same page. And because we're so busy, I believe we're not taking the time to really look at what we're feeding our children. And I understand that with the subsidies of the meat market, the subsidies of the dairy market, it makes good, fresh, healthy living food a little more out of price range. Because if you stop subsidizing the meat and the dairy, it would be so expensive, you wouldn't be eating it. And then I go back to, I listen to moms and I'll go, well, I, I don't know what to make, or I don't have the time. And I thought, wow, there's a real need for recipes for good, healthy, quick food. However, I think like you're talking about her, we got to bring the family back in. This is not a one and done. This is not a mom or a dad. This is like, let's come together as a tribe. Let's create this. And if we have extra to share with the elderly person next door, <laughs> we go share with them. But I just think that I get the feeling that we got to slow down. Things are coming so fast at us. We're not able to think. We're not functioning optimally. And my this is just my, my take on it from what I've seen growing up in the 60s and 70s. We really need to go back to a more gentler time you know yeah and, and the, you know just just very simply just sitting down and slowing down while you eat sitting down while you yeah, eat yeah. changes the way your body processes food and mm -hmm. it 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 helps a little bit with the bad food it helps a lot with the good food but yeah. slowing down and just being mindfully eating will just change your relationship with food and will will bring the food into your body in so much more of a healthier way as well. So it's not just what you're eating, it's how you're eating it. Yeah, and, and you know, the, you hear the saying, it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you, <laughs> you know, the emotions. But I, I hear exactly what you're saying. And in Ayurveda, it is a custom that they would chew their food 25 times every bite. And the reason why, you know, and I was trying to get a cute little jingle in the book, you know, because your stomach doesn't have teeth. The idea is it's to be broken down by the time it gets to the stomach so the acids can start to do its job to pass it through. So we're really not assimilating and, and being able to take what we have. And, and I think that's where we're seeing a lot of this IBS. I mean, obviously the foods we're eating, but, and I was a fast pace. I did everything fast. I walked fast, I talked fast, I ate fast. I had to eat because I had to get on to the next thing. Not the best thing. And I think now I go, wow, what would that have looked like? You know, we had dinners together, but not every night like I would have liked or not with the food that I would have liked. Yeah. You know, another thing with eating fast, fast is something that I jokingly call meal markers. It's yeah. like, and you can tell that you're not chewing your food because sometimes when I would have corn, when I would go to the bathroom, there would be corn. And yeah. that's because by not chewing the food, you're not breaking the cell walls down. And so you might be getting full, but your body's not digesting the food. So by continue, by slowing down and chewing, you break the food and then you don't get those meal markers that show that you're not actually digesting the meals that you ate. And not only that, Herb, like you're saying, you don't realize the hunger signal because we're swallowing so fast. We don't realize that. Wait a minute. My body's already going, whoa, I'm full. I don't need any more. And again, what we're eating makes such a difference. And I'll, I'll say to my kids now, sometimes I'll be busy and I'll, I'll have a, a quick meal. Maybe it's a quick sandwich. And it's like, I don't, my body's telling me I want something to tear apart. I want something to digest. I want something hearty. And for myself, I get that when I'm eating maybe potatoes, maybe a salad with some fruits and some veggies and some nuts. You know, it's not just run out and let me get this. I feel like there's no value. 
And it's finally like, you know, the alarm bells are going off in your brain going, I need real food. I need something more sustainable that came from Mother Earth to help me get through the day. You know? Well, as we were just talking about this, something that popped up in my head and something I've talked to his parents a little bit is that we do say we're so busy. We're on the track. We're on the go all the time. Do you have any suggestions of how to get them to either slow down, plan ahead, whatever, so we can get out of the busy and into a more relaxed like you were just talking about? You know, a couple things. First of all, I think we really need to look at what's important in our life because we say we're busy and I, I'm doing this now at, at 63 years old. I have to go back and go, is that really important right now or can that wait? What's the value that I'm placing on that busy? The other thing is meditation, allowing my body to start to slow down and be present. You know, by being present, we can really pick up and listen to our body, give us tunes and, and cues that we may be missing otherwise. Uh, for the cooking thing, I found like batch cooking, start doing batch cooking so that foods are already kind of planned out, so to speak. You might switch Monday and Thursday's dinners or whatever, but, you know, you've got plenty there that you can slow down and sit down and read a book with the kids or get them to disconnect and really engage in who they are. I think for myself, um, I wish we would have learned communication. Mm -hmm. I was never taught communication. We never taught finances. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many things that would have changed in the life that I have now mm -hmm. had those things been important and certainly not emotions. We never talked about emotions. You stuff those down, you put a lid on them, kind of like the trauma. I'll give I, you something to cry about. <laughs> I've heard that many times. And I think, unfortunately, we're now learning, thank God we're waking up, that it's time to address the emotions. There's nothing wrong with an emotion. There's no good and there's no bad. There's no good or bad food. Everything is what it is. But when we can look at that emotion and go, gosh, I'm feeling a little sad today. What is my body, my brain, where, where I'm feeling the sadness? What's coming up? And just sitting with it for a little while and understanding what that is. Maybe I'm sad because this business deal didn't go the way I thought it was going to be. Maybe I'm sad because for a child, you know, it wasn't maybe the grade that they wanted. Now they gave it their all. And in my book, you did what you had to do. That's a hundred percent. And you did it. Now it may not have been what they look like. They meaning teacher, parent, whoever, mm -hmm. that's a perception. And I think when we start to look at the emotions and, and at least can identify it, most children from what I'm picking up, can't even identify with the emotions because we've stuffed them down for so long. We never talked about them. And now I love it that this new age group, we're starting to really come out of that. And we're really starting to look at our emotions and look how they feed into our actions, our decisions that we're making. I think extremely important, but communication was something I never really learned. And I'm, I'm grateful for some of the teachers out there, like the holistic psychologist that's taking the time to really sit down and, and share with people, you know, here's, here's a great way to communicate you know, bringing, bringing that up so that it's simple enough so that all of us can start to look at how we can communicate better with one another. And it starts with that slowing down and putting those technology devices down as well and actually looking at somebody, right? One of the things that um, we've been told by several different communication experts that we've interviewed is that especially if you have teenagers and you haven't gotten that communication down pat, you can't stop and just set them down and look them in the eye and get them talking right now, right? You have to ease into that a little bit, right? right? So either doing the dishes together side by side or taking a car drive together side by side. So you're not looking, but you can at least hear. Cooking. Cooking, yeah. cooking together, right? Gardening. Gardening, yeah. taking a walk, those kinds of things. So, but start young. Don't wait till your kiddos need you to communicate. Start doing and practicing and showing and modeling early. Yeah, Ab absolutely. And I think it makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, they've done studies on families that have done family dinners and sit down and eat with no electronics. The kids are less likely to get in trouble at school, less likely for drugs and alcohol yep. because they have a support system. Yeah. They know that they can come home. They've got a support system. And that was the thing. After my parents divorced, I knew my mother supported us, not just financially. I knew she was busy and, and you know, working a job at day and then teaching part time at night. But I knew I had a support. I knew I could be honest and open with her. I knew there was a communication, you know, and I just feel like when kids can understand that and have that support, 
you know, um, it's a lot easier. I just didn't know how to resolve arguments or mm -hmm. things where I would feel wounded. Yeah. I didn't know how to communicate after that point. So then I would just shut down, mm -hmm. you know? So I think communication, you know, in my perfect world, <laughs> if I had my way, <laughs> we would start the kids young with playing out in the dirt, uh -huh. growing food, kind of like I've heard Herb does. Little you know, house on the prairie. <laughs> hey, I, but there's far. nothing wrong with that. You know, you've got the fresh air, the sunshine, you're in Mother Earth. Nature has so much to teach us, yeah. you know, and going through that and then getting that bond with the family unit and building from there. And family unit can look like all different kind of things, you know, but building that family unit so those children have support. They know where to go to in time of need. They know who's going to be there, not to necessarily criticize them or, or knock them down, but there to support them. It was interesting. There was a, a comment I heard Brene Brown make one time. You know, you walk by your child's room. They're in a fetal position in the corner, you know, crying. Lights are all off. You go in like the parent that we want to be and we want to fix everything. And she said, no, you sit there and you be with. And sometimes just sitting there and being with our children as they go through these emotions lets them know that there's someone there supporting them. You know, we, we can't Speaking of Brene them. Brown, yeah. um, after one of her talks, she talked about how a guy came to her and said that men aren't able to show the same kind of emotions because even though women say they want that man to show it, it's not safe for a guy and they start to kind of lose respect. So... From that kind of from that kind of point of view, I would highly recommend starting to look into the Stoic teachings, the Stoicism, because mm. they do still talk about emotions, but they talk about them as signals. You feel the emotion and you understand that, hey, this is a signal of something that's happening in my environment and I don't react to it. I use it to inform me about how I act. Mm -hmm. And so, so while the... Wow. So, so the young men who might be listening to this, or yeah. if you have a young man, maybe start looking into some of the stoic teachings, because sometimes for guys showing emotions becomes dangerous around other guys. And it, so by being able, but still understanding the emotion and then being able to recognize it as a signal of how to maybe change how you're active, something in your environment. Is, is so critically important. So it's not one size fits all. It's not just, hey, become emotionally intelligent. There are ways to move and act accordingly as well. Absolutely. And emotions are nothing more than an awareness. You know, I, I believe that we are body, mind, soul, spirit. Mm -hmm. And our soul and spirit are always talking to us. If we're quiet enough yeah. and we're listening, and I know for myself, sometimes it can be hard for me to tune in because my ego size, like, no, you got to get this done. And we got this and I, here's my schedule and here's what I got to get done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm learning to go, no, wait a minute. That doesn't feel good right now. I don't know why I can't put, like you're saying, it's an awareness. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do right now, because this is where I feel like I'm going to get the most benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously there's things that, you know, are going to have a higher importance, but is it, can I wait a minute? Can I spend time and just feed my soul, feed my spirit and give it what it needs right now. Because then I'm a better person when I go out to do X, Y, and Z. And I think these are things that we're slowly but surely seeing more and more go on um, and that people are accepting more, you know, open to it a little more. Yeah. yeah. Instead of being on the treadmill, it's like, okay, let's take a little time out and make sure that we are. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. amazing how just learning how to breathe you know, everybody, everybody breathes. It's like, oh, but you don't know how to breathe. And if I told you, man, you don't know how to breathe. You're like, man, I've been doing it I'm my entire life. life. What do you mean? I don't know how to breathe. But there are some just real simple ways to change your breathing that can bring you into the present moment that can actually help you digest your food better, that can help yeah. you be able to observe your emotions just by changing some of your breath and, and learning how to breathe slightly differently. So I'm, I'm all for that as well, because the breath of life. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it's interesting because a lot of us stay in this fight or flight. What I've heard from some of the doctors, it's not so much that we go into it, but we're not coming out of it. Correct. We're not slowing down. And now we're hearing of everyone burning out their adrenals and stuff. Yep. And, you know, like you're saying, it's a simple technique. You know, you just do some deep breathing. And then what I've always heard is you purse your mouth like you're blowing through a straw and you just blow out to the count of three. 
and you do it again and you do it to a round of three times and it starts to calm you down. And well, now you, to calm down, you make your out breath longer than your in breath. Mm, so there yeah. are some like, there's, there's like the 478 technique. Yep. You breathe in for four seconds, you breathe out for seven, you hold for eight, you breathe in for four seconds, you breathe out for seven, you hold for eight. So that way you're breathing in for four seconds and then it's 15 seconds before your next breath. That's just one way to calm yourself down. Yeah. Or even just a simple three, five. You know, yeah. you breathe in for three, you breathe out for five. And if you need to hype yourself up, you change that around. You breathe in for, you breathe out quicker. So, you know, there's, so you can energize yourself as well as calm yourself down. And I think these are simple tips that a lot of people are unaware of, mm -hmm. you know, or what I've seen it in some of the, you know, bigger cities where things seem slower, like, out, like, you know, we laugh little house on the prairie, things seemed a little slower. You're a little tapped in more to nature. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm feeling, and that's why I was like, you know, I've been in Phoenix a long time. I am ready to get out. I've watched the population explosion and it's like, it's more than what I want to do. I want to slow down. And I think that's like you're saying, but if we can equip these kids with these tools mm -hmm. so that when they're in that emotion or when they're in that space, they have the opportunity to handle it. So they can come in a bigger, better person. You follow what I'm saying? Then rather than being in that fear, mm -hmm. you know, and peer, we, I can vaguely remember back high school and junior high weren't always the easiest things, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's tough going through it. And, you know, another tip for eating healthy, especially if you're in a city where you don't have access to the ground to farm your own stuff. And a lot of times the fresh fruit isn't necessarily the best. Yeah. If you go to the freezer section where they have like fresh organic frozen food mm -hmm. because they're picked when they're supposed to be and then they're flash frozen. So that is a really good way to start getting a healthier fruit and vegetable in the frozen section, even more so sometimes than and the fresh fruit in packed and that have been packed and changed picked early. <laughs> so, you know, so in some ways, some of our processing has gotten better in a way to bring us healthier foods. But again, it is at a slightly pricier price point. So, you know, you, you do pay for quality, but that is, that is one way inside of an inner city to be able to get some fresher vegetables and some fresher fruit, even though it's frozen. What, no, and I completely agree. And it's like, we're either going to pay for our health now or we're going to pay for it later. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 just that important. And I think hopefully as, as our healthcare system um, is in such a dire strait, you know, and that's what was breaking my heart when we're hearing about 15 year olds with heart disease, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got, you know, ob you know, obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure and little kids. I'm like, dude, we are the adults here. What are we doing? You know, and that's where I would love to see a group of people come together nationwide to start sharing with these moms, sharing with these families. How, how do we start to slowly shift these little things that we know are game changers? And like you're saying, it doesn't, you know, you can say, well, organic's expensive. Is it really? I mean, not in the long run. You know, there's not always a way, run. you know, to stretch a buck, so they say, or that's what they yeah. used to say in my day. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I, I stretch my dollars by not doing healthcare. So yeah. here's an interesting thing about healthcare. You can tell that healthcare works and is really great because if you look at the number of people who are really obese in wheelchairs on crutches with handfuls of medicine every day, they are spending tons and tons of money and the healthcare is keeping them alive. What I started doing is like, if I live to be a hundred, if I live to be 80, I don't want to be in that wheelchair. I don't want to be what taking handfuls. So what can I do now so that I am still mobile, so that I'm still walking, so that I'm not in that wheelchair, so that I'm not overweight. And mm -hmm. that has to do with food. And so Absolutely. since I started eating so and much healthcare, seven and exercise, <laughs> I, I hardly ever have to go to the doctor. I'm not on any medications. Mm -hmm. I do take some supplements, but there, I, I, there aren't any medications that I have to take mm -hmm. because I'm taking care of myself ahead of that time. So yes, the food might be more expensive, but I'm not having the medical bills to go along with the cheap food. I completely agree. My, my doctor at the time fired me 15, 20 years ago. Now, mind you, my husband was still a client of his and my all my children. 
but because I didn't go regularly enough, I was taken off the book so they could put someone else in. And I thought, you know what, that's fine. I don't need your stuff anyway, because thank God I am pretty healthy. Uh -huh. I've always had very strenuous jobs, which I believe is what's helped me to move through things, mm -hmm. um, you know, through my days of doing bodybuilding and bodybuilding is a low glycemic diet. You know, when I was talking to my trainer about it, I was like, oh, but yet everyone goes for these diet fads and yet we could do something. I understand the high protein may not be the best, but I was healthier than never got sick. Still don't ever get sick. You know, I don't go to a doctor very often. And like you're saying, I, I have supplements. I do my best to eat the best I can. I get activity and I'm outside as much as I can to get fresh air and sunshine. Yeah. And, you know, I think those are the simple components sometimes we've missed. We blame it on the food, which our food is, is some of that processed stuff is bad. I'm not denying that by any stretch of the imagination, but there are, like you're saying, are simple things that we can do to shift and change that in our life. And a lot of it is mindset too. Mm -hmm. You know, are we in a negative state of mind or are we in a positive state of mind? Yeah, this, this body is amazing. It houses the most complex thing that has ever been found by man in the universe, which is our brain. Yes. And our brain is capable of healing us. Our body is capable of regenerating itself yes. and healing it. We just have to get out of the way. We have to stop poisoning it. We have to stop putting toxins in it. And once we once we get out of the way and calm down and breathe right and get the sunshine and let our body actually start taking care of itself, it will because it, it wants to take care of oh, us. Yeah. It wants to carry us around. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. I think the body is designed to heal itself. And when we give it what it needs and allow it the time and space, it will heal itself. But we can't keep consuming the Big Macs and the big, big gulps four or five times a day and expect it to heal because our gut feels upset. We need to slow down. We need to shift and move in a different direction. Yeah. Um, but I completely agree with you. I think as we start to slow down and listen to our body, like you're talking about, we're able to do better things for us because remember that food is feeding us. So I look at it like the energy. If I'm feeding it dead, I call it dead food because it's not living. But if I can eat something closer to a living substance like you're talking about even if it's the frozen organic uh -huh. and something pulled from a yard you know or within a farmer's market within a few days of harvest i've got more opportunity to have living organisms in my body which is going to help my brain my heart everything about my body you know yeah, and it's, i it's think weird. it's weird sometimes i'll be, as i'm going through my yard i'll actually pull out a dandelion out of the ground and eat the dandelion yeah there are some other weeds. I, I don't necessarily remember what it is, but they're they're actually healthier for you than spinach. And so there are every once in a while there are some weeds. They used to be planted in gardens, and now they're just yeah. like they grow out of the right. sidewalk. And so yeah, it's it's amazing. And my asparagus that I grow, I, I eat it like carrots. I just chop yeah. it down, pull it out. My my yeah. dogs like start <laughs> jumping at me, so my dogs eat my asparagus with me, and I eat it like carrots raw. It's it's just amazing, right. and there's the so off. much more flavor in it yeah. when it's mm -hmm. when it's there so yeah. yeah it's it's amazing what's out there if you start looking into it that's definitely my heart and passion to see little kids walk out there and grab a piece of kale or asparagus or a carrot right out of it knock the dirt off of it and eat it i i think that's when we start to really see a shift not just you know in our weight and in our health but mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually we start to see the consciousness rise and I think that's what's so empowering. And one thing I want to encourage parents is that they're like, oh, well, my kid won't eat that. It tastes bad or whatever. But if you get one of those fresh things straight out of the garden or out of the planter box, it tastes so much different that your kids might actually want to give it a try. So don't discount, oh, they don't like this. They don't like that. Give it a try. You know, wash it off, brush it off, let them have it straight, warm, whatever. Yeah, it's good for them. And it and it's so easy to start, like for myself, I'm in a rental home right now. So yeah. I, I don't have a big garden outside. So I just learned how to do some two by four by fours and just cut them in half and make my own little garden. It's easy. Or you can get ones that put on a patio. Yep. So anyone can start to garden and start to show kids the value of fresh food. You know, and I think we, we learn from nature, you know, not everything's going to be, you know, roses all the time. We're going to have weeds in our garden, kind of like our thoughts. We're going to have to pluck them out. What do I want to keep and what do I not? Okay. You know, but I think there's so much that when we look at nature as a whole that we can learn from her. 
Absolutely. Yep. Wow. So big conversation here. There's so many things. I mean, we've gone from food to busy to back to food and back again. But I love all the little nuggets, the little tips that have been passed along the way. So parents, you know, go back and listen to this. Pick up these tips and don't just put them in your pocket and keep them for later. Actually pull them out, use them, dust them off, use them with your kids. Have these discussions with your kids, you know. Absolutely. What is it that you want in your life so that you're active but not busy because one thing i've heard over and over is we need to slow down a little bit so be active but not busy right really pare down the activities and also trying to get that fresh food around the outside of the grocery store you hear it a lot you know get yeah. the stuff from the outside of the grocery store not the inside of the grocery store because most of that is more of the living food that we need and there's so many great resources online nowadays. Um, I know Love and Lemons has some wonderful free recipes. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, salads, to me, are so different than when I grew up. As, as one of my nutritionist friends says, oh, my God, salads are like a party in a kid's mouth. You yeah. know, because we didn't have nuts and right. seeds that we would put in them, you know, and, yeah. you know, all the vegetables and fruits that we have now. And it used to be we thought this was the box. And uh -huh. now it's like everything's open. So it's yeah. wonderful because salads can be a fantastic meal and very filling, protein, everything you need right there in a salad. Yeah, exactly. So Norma, so how is it that you are helping people? What is it that you do? How do you get your message out? And what it says that you have a passion for working with moms on the value of what we help on what we feed our children. So how is it that you reach out? What is it that you do? I am still really in the grassroots stages. Um, I would love to do a program that I call Motherly Wisdom, mm -hmm. which would be similar if you thought about a boys and girls club where mm -hmm. we would have women of knowledge, wisdom, that share it with a lot. Because what I realize is there's a lot of single moms out there, a lot of moms that don't have uh, family or um, someone that's going to share the wisdom with them. The things I was talking about, the communication, the finances, the food. How do we raise our kid? How do we disconnect? What I realized is watching one of my nieces, there was no one there to support her. Mm, yeah. And spirit was like, but there's you, you know? And I started looking at it. There's a lot of women like that out there. And I would love to start a movement where we can get women that are going to come together and help those others. So that's still in the beginning stages. And if you have any tips and tricks you can hand me, I am open. Because I really feel like by coming together, again, as a community, Mm -hmm. and teaching with love, we can start to change the world. You know, I would love to do community gardens and I get, you know, started on some of them here buying at the farmer's markets and stuff because we vote with our dollars. Right. So if I can spend my dollars at a farmer's market and help a local farmer here in Arizona, then that's what I want to do. Same thing, you know, with my beef. If I can go to a local community supported agricultural, mm -hmm. we start to change the movement of where we're going and the health. And that slow process helps to build better. So getting out, doing little speaking things like this, talking with other people, working with some of the nonprofits here in the Phoenix area, even though I'd really like to expand more to see what we can do to really help these women. Because I really feel like there's people at home right now probably crying and praying for somebody to come and help. And like you're saying, times are different now. Yeah. And now more than ever, we need to let them know, hey, you're okay. You're not broken. Yep. And we're going to get through this. And there's people that can help and support you. And that's what we want to do. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Is there a website or an address that someone can reach out to you? You know, you've, you've given them a message of they need to reach out. Is there some way they can get a hold of you? And find your yeah. books. Yeah. And find your books. Yeah. The books are on Amazon um, or Harmony. So it's a really easy one. It's Harmony at Norma McCormick is my email mm -hmm. or Harmony. And then the letter N Harmony in Abundance dot com is the website. Awesome. And we're in the process of revamping that and getting that together. And I'd really like to start a group or a, a family, a family food program, you know, fresh start, Ener energizing the moms, the families, the dads, everyone, you know, let's get in and let's do this thing to help sit down and make the simple guidelines. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so very much. All right. Vibrant families, as you've been listening, bringing education home is your podcast for finding these experts, for finding these ideas, for stretching our brains. And like Herb says, both inside and outside the box, because sometimes we go one direction and then another time we go another direction. But we love bringing people like Norma to you to help you think about what's good for you, 
what's good for your family, and how can we really educate the whole child and educate the whole family so that we can make these gains together as a society. So Norma, thank you for being with us today. Any thank last so words, much. anything that you didn't get to say that you wanted to say? <laughs> you know what? Just know that you're doing the best you can and you're in the right place and time and there is support out there. So for anyone that feels like they're in need, reach out and get it and be kind to your child. You know, this is their formative years and this is going to make a difference on how they and who they become as they grow. You know, reach out for that help and support. Beautiful and words. once again, I would like to thank you for being here today. So many people today just talk about the problems of society and you are out there putting yourself on the line, reaching yeah. out, trying to make a difference. And we need more people like you. We need more people who are willing to go out there and not just talk about the problems, but be, be part of the solution. And yeah. you are part of the solution. So thank you. thank you very much for being here today. Thank, thank you guys you for being you. And it has just been a lovely conversation. Thank you. All right, audience, that is it for today. Make sure you check out some of our upper, other episodes, our other experts as well. Reach out to Norma if you um, have some questions about what we talked about today. And best of all, join us again next week when we have another show, another expert with excellent ideas for you and your family. Bye for now. Bye. Hello and welcome to Bringing Education Home. I'm Herb. And I'm Christina. And together we bring you experts and ideas to help grow healthy, happy, successful families that are both inside and outside the box. If you like the show, be sure to follow Christina on Facebook. And please leave us a like review on your favorite podcast platform.